In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a seamless loop for cloth physics, for a continuous play, without a break. It works for any cloth object, but we'll take a flag as an example which we have created here. It has got cloth physics and we've already baked this physics from frame number 1 to frame number 250. Now if we run this animation, the flag will wave as expected due to the wind force. But if we change the end frame number further, the flag will wave only up to frame 250, and then it will stop because we baked it only up to 250. So we'll now discuss how to make it wave until the end, without actually baking the cloth physics that much, we'll play the current animation in a loop. Let's go to the first frame, and select the flag, then go to the object menu, and under apply, we have to apply the rotation and scale transformations. In the modifiers tab, we can see one subdivision surface modifier, and a smooth modifier. We have to temporarily remove all of them. We'll just have the cloth modifier that actually holds the cloth physics. Now I have to export this cloth physics into an external file. So go to the edit menu and open preferences. Then under the extensions tab, we can either search for the word MDD and install this new tech MDD format. Or a better way would be to search for the extension called point cache, which works better for cloth physics and install it from here. Once it is installed, close this window and select the flag object if not already selected. Now in the file menu, under export, we will be able to see the option called point cache. We can also use MDD, but point cache works slightly better. Now we have to go to the location where we want to export the physics, and we have to give it some name. Please note that the export will be saved with this name, and before we export, we have to disable this option, as we don't need it. Finally hit the export button, and it can take some time to complete. It will create a file with the same name that we have used during our export. Now back to the blend file, we have to first remove the cloth physics from here. Then go to the frame number one, and then open the modifiers tab. Here we have to add a modifier, which is called mesh cache. We have to first change this format to point cache, since we have exported it in the point cache format, and then we have to select the same file which we created in the previous step. Now expand the option called time remapping, and then select the factor option, and go to this custom tab. As we change this evaluation time, we see that the flag is going through the baked frames, so this way we can easily animate it. But to get a better look and feel for the waving flag, let's minimize this and add a couple of other modifiers. First, we'll add a subdivision surface modifier, and the levels can be set as two. Then we'll add another modifier from the deform group, called smooth modifier, and we can set this repeat number to five. Then let's minimize these modifiers and go to the mesh cache modifier. Now, as we change this factor, and the flag animates, we have to look at the wave pattern, especially at this curvature, and the shape of the folds on this section of the cloth. Our job is to find out three distinct points that have almost a similar folds. One point should be close to the starting point, maybe we can take point 23, and we take a note of its pattern, how the curvature looks at this point. Then we have to find out another point close to this, where it has a similar pattern, maybe we can go for point 3, as we see that the pattern is similar to the previous one. Then let's take it to the end of the animation, and we'll trace back slowly, looking for another similar point that matches the pattern. An approximate match is all we need, so let's take point 93 for the third point. So here we can see the shape of the flag for the three keyframes, and please note that we are utilizing only 70% of our baked data. This is very important, we are using point 23 to point 93 for this field. Our original animation length was 250, but we can't use the entire length of this 250, we'll use approximately 70% of that, or say 200 frames. Now we have to make a duplicate copy of this mesh cache modifier. Then for this first modifier, and for frame number one, we'll insert a keyframe for this influence factor. And we'll change this evaluation factor to 0.3, the second flag position, with a keyframe. Then we'll go to frame number 175, which is 25 frames before this end frame. And we'll insert another keyframe for the influence factor, but no need to change anything here. Then let's go to the last frame number, we need to change the influence factor to zero, with a keyframe. And we'll also change this to the third flag position, or 0.93, and insert a keyframe. Now let's minimize this, here we have the duplicate modifier with the same settings. So we'll start from the first frame again, and we need to change this influence factor to zero, with a keyframe. We'll change this to 0.23, or the first flag position with a keyframe. Then we'll go to 175 like before, we need to insert a keyframe for them, without any change. Finally, for the last frame, we have to change the influence factor to 1, with a keyframe. And we'll also change this to 0.3, and insert a keyframe. So we can see that the flag pattern is exactly same for the first frame, and the last frame, 
which is an essential criteria to loop an animation, so we are now good to go. While the flag is selected or highlighted, we have to go to the graph editor from here. We can see that we have four entries for the four fields we keyframed. Now press A to select all the keyframes together, then go to the key menu, and from interpolation mode, we have to select the linear option. Then go to the modifiers tab, and then select the cycles option from here. It will add a cycles modifier for all the four key fields, so everything will now play in a loop indefinitely. Let's now change the end frame number to any high value as needed, and if we now run this, the flag will wave in a perfect seamless loop continuously, even beyond the initial 200 or 250 frames. When we cross the 250 mark here, we can see that there are no breaks in the waving pattern. Please remember that you may have to use your own values for these fields. There are no fixed rules here. And also, you can start with a larger initial base of say 500 frames, instead of 250, for a better result. So this is how you can create an endless loop for any cloth material. I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.